So I have been dreading making this video for a very, very long time. So my name is Morgan Gold and I am a duck farmer who is allergic to duck eggs. This has been a fact that I have known about myself for several years now, but not necessarily a fact that I knew before I started duck farming. You see, a few years ago when I started raising ducks for eggs, when I got my first duck eggs on the farm, I was super excited. <laughs> Like, I can't believe it, man. My first egg from the Khaki Campbell. But then as I started to consume the fruits of my animal husbandry labor, I noticed a little bit of a weird trend. Like the first time I remember eating one of my duck's eggs, I felt a little bit queasy afterwards. At the time, I never suspected the duck egg. I always assumed it was like maybe some bad cafeteria food or that sandwich I ate at the gas station. I mean, it was like I only had a touch of food poisoning. It wasn't anything extreme. But then the second time I ate duck eggs, my reaction was a little bit, shall we say, violent. <laughs> And so that situation happened and I really started to seriously question, wait a minute, was it the duck eggs that made me sick? At least I had thought I'd eaten duck eggs in the past prior to, like I'd bought them at my local farmer's market and never had any issues. But somehow the duck eggs that I was producing on my farm were making me sick. And so one day about three and a half years ago, I took a whole day off from work and I sat down and I ate a couple of duck eggs and nothing else as an experiment for science. <laughs> to test this theory out about whether I was allergic or not. And lo and behold, I ate those duck eggs and I immediately got sick. And I had to pinpoint it and come to the conclusion that yes, I am a duck farmer who is allergic to duck eggs. I am absolutely allergic to ducks. And so ever since that discovery, I've steered clear of duck eggs and consuming chicken eggs on the regular basis. In fact, that's why I even hatched out my own chickens in the first place. I never planned on owning chickens. It was just, I wanted farm fresh eggs and so that meant I needed to have chickens. Because I'll tell you right now folks, I do eat a lot of eggs. Like I would say I consume on average three to four eggs per day and eggs always make up the bulk of one of my meals. They're easy to cook, they taste great, they're pretty nutritious. On a farm like ours, they are abundant. And so basically I sell the duck eggs we produce or my wife eats them and I stick to the chicken eggs. But there's another type of egg we produce on this farm and that's the goose egg. And in fact, I expect to produce about 800 goose eggs this year. But despite being one of the largest producers of goose eggs in the state of Vermont, I've actually never eaten one of these things. You know, usually we're selling people fertilized goose eggs in the mail or we're hatching them out ourselves here on the farm. But every so often we will collect eggs that are probably not suitable for hatching. Like for example, this one is a massive goose egg. I mean, just to do the size comparison for you guys, right? This is a chicken egg, this is a goose egg. There's probably four of these little chicken eggs that fit into one of these giant goose eggs, maybe five. But I've never eaten them because I've always been afraid that the same issue that I've had with duck eggs will happen with this goose egg. But on today's video, we are challenging that fear and I'm gonna see if I am in fact allergic to goose eggs. All right, here goes nothing. I feel like this could end very badly. God, these goose eggs are hard to crack. Okay, let's drop this on the plate. Add a little bit of pepper, add a little bit of salt. Hit it with some hot sauce. All right, let's do this. I will admit I'm very nervous about this. Let's give it a shot. Mmm. One thing's for sure, it definitely tastes good. It tastes really good, actually. I don't know if it's just for, like forbidden fruit phenomenon, but this tastes better than like our chicken eggs by a lot. That's really good. Now, one question you guys might be having is, am I worried about the health risks? And the answer is no. When I say I'm allergic to duck eggs, it doesn't mean I go into like anaphylactic shock or I have like the risk of like, swelling up or something like that. I just mean that like my body does not digest the food all that well. You know, what happens is specifically, there is a protein in duck eggs that I just can't digest or can't handle and my body treats it like I've just been food poisoned versus in chicken eggs, it doesn't have that protein. Sometimes you're gonna find people who are allergic to chicken eggs but can eat duck eggs for the same reason. And I've actually read a ton of research online on this topic, like academic studies and the like. Well, the thing is, it's been sort of inconclusive about goose eggs, which is why I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen. I will say this though, it tastes very, very good. All right, now it's time to do chores. I actually run a little bit late this morning. Usually I'll eat a breakfast 
after I do my chores, but I don't know if that was gonna be an opportunity available to me this morning, given this experiment. Morning, Toby Dog. Hey, Mr. Pablo. How's it going, buddy? Oh, come on out, come on out. Say hello. Toby wants to go see his friends, the cattle. What you doing there, Jimi Hendrix? You napping in the hay feeder? How's it going, buddy? And how are you doing, Madam Murder Mittens? Let's go check on the flashlight, huh? Hello, Ginevra. Hey, flashlight. How's it going, girl? Oh, oh man. I know, and you're, oh, you're beating the heck out of your cone. I'm gonna have to fix that later. So I've got some medicine for Abby to eat. There you go, there you go. Abby's the easiest animal I've ever had in terms of trying to feed her medicines. All right, let's see what we got going on in the hatchery here this morning. How's it going, Mother Goose? She's been doing a really good job sitting on that nest. Looks like we got more eggs over here. I'm waiting for another goose to come and start sitting on this nest. That'll be pretty soon, I think. Settle down. She's about ready to get her cone taken off and. I'm gonna give her one check with the vet before she resumes normal. I just don't wanna take any risks with her surgery. Yeah, in case you're wondering too, I've been letting a couple of the chickens and geese actually stay out all night so that they can have a spot to actually lay and sit on their nests. I'm trying to encourage nesting activity this time of year, which is a little different than where I was even two weeks ago. Rise and grind, weird chickens. Hey, how's it going there, Rosie? I think some of the chickens have been escaping through this hole that the geese have ripped. I keep trying to duct tape it up, but they keep breaking through it. I'm definitely gonna have to secure that before Abby resumes her normal duties. Let loose the goose! Hey, Abby, no! Remember, Abby, we gotta be on good behavior. I know you're excited to see your friends, the geese. Let's see how we're doing in here this morning. We've got a couple more mama goose nest going, including these two gals who are sitting over here. I know everybody's gonna probably want an update on our little bullied girl. She's actually doing pretty good. She's, her feathers are starting to grow back. She's seeming healthier. I know there was a lot of concern that I didn't separate her. Hey, Abby, don't scare that goose off her nest. It's actually what we want to see. But the reality is I felt like I was actually gonna do more harm by segregating her and keeping her alone than keeping her with everybody else. And I did not suspect bird flu. Oh, wow, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna cover these back up as well. Oh, you got a bone there? Toby's like, she is dangerous with this cone. All right, we're gonna try to fix your cone in a minute or two. And by the way, guys, I just had a problem with my camera and I accidentally was unable to record me releasing the quacken. So the ducks are already out. <laughs> How's it going there, duckery dudes? Good to see you, Jemima Puddle Duck. That right there is Jemima Puddle Duck, our oldest duck on the farm. So some folks might be wondering why I didn't use a soft cone or a bodysuit. Well. The soft cone wasn't gonna actually restrict her range of movement enough to keep her surgery stuff out of harm's way. And I just didn't have enough time to order the bodysuit. There we go, got one there. There we go. Now you don't only just look like a flashlight, you look like a damaged flashlight that's been kicked around for years, but no, you're just a little Abby girl. For those wondering if I feel any different, um, Nothing yet so far. In the past, I've found it usually takes a couple hours before I notice an impact, but we'll see. Just coming in here to pooper scoop Abby's area. Out you go, chickens, come on. The birds absolutely love coming into Abby's area. I don't know what it is. But I find if I leave her door open even for like 30 seconds, they're trying to barge in. Come on, you two, out, out, out. <clears throat> Actually, a piece of plastic from Abby's cone. As you guys have seen in previous videos, you gotta be wicked vigilant against this plastic issue. Here's your breakfast. Oh, you're hungry? Good girl. You're being such a good pup. You can enjoy that. Go for it. I think she's expecting more special treats, but she'll realize that it's just a dry kibble morning. Toby Dog, I'll give you a little snack too. How about that, buddy? Just a light snack. Still getting you used to the once a day feeding. How's it going, girl? Found yourself a little nest, huh? We'll have to check back there later, see if there's any eggs. There's definitely gonna be eggs under there. Mr. Pablo Barncott, get out of here. Out you go, Pablo. Come on, I'm feeding cats next. Let's go. Toby, you're allowed to stay and eat your food, man. All right, watch over the castle there, Toby. Set this right here because it's gonna be part of my morning project. You know, doing this egg eating experiment has me wondering at what point in my day am I gonna be essentially shut down? So I'm gonna try to cram as much work as possible into the next hour or two that I have guaranteed before I get sick. Settle down, you guys. For one cat, one for another cat, another for another cat. Yeah, all three cats have adjusted to their urinary tract infection food really well. Basically, these little pellets soaked in water. Pretty good eaters. Yes, they are. The biggest chore I want to try to tackle this morning is, since it's been so rainy, yeah, it's been about three days since I've mucked out the cattle area, and so I'm due for picking up cow poop. I should also give the cattle some fresh water. Sorry, Curdy. Didn't mean to scare you there, buddy. Good to see you, Kurt Cobain.
for those of you who are wondering, our calves are doing really good. Coming a little bit more docile. I'm not sure if Jimi Hendrix is gonna let me pet him. No, no scratch. So again, we have Jimi Hendrix, Belinda Carlisle. We have Joey Ramone, who's right there. Joey's getting a little nursing from his mom, Annabelle. And over here, we have our littlest calf. Still haven't named her yet. Working on coming up with one. Kurt, leave me alone while I'm doing this, buddy. You know, even though he's a steer, Kurt Cobain is rather protective of his herd. So I give him the respect he deserves. You know, one of the things people don't tell you about having animals, right? Is you spend a lot of that time dealing with the animal poop. Which, quite honestly, I don't mind at all. Next year, this stuff is going to be absolute gold for our garden. That's gold, Jerry. Gold! I'm not sure if it's just the task at hand or if I'm mentally psyching myself up, but I'm definitely feeling a little... I don't know, a little queasy. So you'll probably see in the next video or two, I'll end up moving these cattle out from this area and back out to pasture. With all the rains we've been having, I wanna give the pasture a little bit more time to dry before I put them out there. You know, these heavy hooves can really do damage on the ground. I mean, look right here. This is actually one of the muddier spots because the water comes down from our roof and then goes right down here. With the weight of the cattle tromping through this over and over multiple times a day, it just, absolutely ruins the ground that's fine for a little sacrifice yard like the one i have built here but i wouldn't want that to happen out to my pasture it's also still way too early for them to eat any fresh grass the grass out here has barely even started to show signs of green like it's just starting to shift and so i'm gonna need to give myself at least another month before they actually start eating the grass and so that means i'll put them out on pasture but still feed them hay but i think they'll like the pasture i think you know, we're getting to the point where big blizzard is kind of out of the question. Not out of the question, but unlikely. The much more likely scenario is just snow flurries, which will happen from time to time. But even for the little calves at this point, they're not going to mind it that much. Watch out for the poop there, Pablo. Can you get yourself out of there? Okay, just checking. What you looking at? I'm just scooping poop. Speaking of poop, I'm not feeling good right now. I think I'm definitely feeling it. I'm going to go head on inside and, and sit down for a minute. Ooh, yeah, not feeling good at all. One hour later. <sighs> hey, little barn cat. You know, I just spent the last 45 minutes or so being sick. Fluids at both ends. It was not pretty. <sighs> oh man, I don't feel good at all. <sighs> I hope I can keep this water down. I'm not gonna say that this was an unexpected result, but it was just definitely an unwelcome result. I don't know what to tell you guys. I think I'm gonna just spend the next couple of hours inside, maybe watch a movie or something, hang on the couch, and stay within sprinting distance of the bathroom because I am most definitely allergic to goose eggs. No doubt about it. Come on, Lil, you wanna join me? Why is it often the things that we love the most are often the most allergic to? Like take this little cat here, for instance. I'm allergic to cats too, and I've actually managed to suppress my cat allergy quite a bit by just constant exposure. Doesn't mean that if I were to rub my face after petting her like this, I'm not gonna get itchy eyes or sneezing or that sort of thing. But I don't think it works the same way with duck and goose eggs. Epilogue. Today has absolutely been kind of a waste of a day. It's about 4.30 right now. I've been napping on the couch, get up a couple times to go to the bathroom. I am just not feeling good. I just came up here now to actually check on things here with the incubator. There are more goose eggs. I've actually got 90 of them in there right now. My hope is that they hatch very, very soon. I don't think we're that far off from the hatch. So yes, on our farm, goose eggs are wonderful for hatching. Goose eggs are wonderful for selling. For me personally, they are not wonderful for eating. I will say they tasted wonderful though. And so if you're not allergic to goose eggs and you have a chance to eat one, I highly recommend it. But if you're allergic to duck eggs, proceed with extreme caution when it comes to goose eggs. That's kind of all I got. I'll leave these videos here for you guys so you can watch them and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.